Welcome back everybody. I'm super 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 excited. Look at this. We've got a we've got a new home, a new dirty bastard home. This is a uh, the studio and from here we will do all the future vlog episodes not all of them of course we will try to be out on the road but uh, so good to have an office to work and it's super super nice I'm super fun uh, but um, this is not the topic for today first of all welcome back if you've been here before if you're new hi I'm Roland um, today I've got a few questions I want to answer. Um, a few episodes back I asked you to send me questions if you have some about the rally bike and uh, about the build and whatsoever. And yes, there are a few. Um, yeah, this is what we will take care of today. So, let's do this. Before we start, first of all, I'm super, super, super pumped to welcome you in the new studio. We've, uh, or I've spent a lot of time in the last days um, getting your paint on the wall and getting everything done and do a nice place to work for me. And from here, we will do all the future episodes, uh, at least the episodes that uh, take place in the studio, of course. But uh, let's start with the questions. So, what we've got here. We've got a question from uh, Stefan. Stefan uh, is from Italy and he asked, uh, my question would be, how did you go about choosing between the Kit 701, Omega Rally Kit and the Raid Garage Kit? And then why did you choose the 701 over the others or the Kit 701 over the others? Um, the thing is, I've checked a lot of uh, rally kits. I've checked the Kit 701, the Omega, of course, uh, the Aurora, then the Raid kit and uh, I was looking for something really really good quality wise and in the end I, will not, I don't want to say that the other ones are bad quality but from my personal opinion and my personal feeling I had to choose between the Omega kit and the kit 701 and uh, the reason why I choose the kit 701 was uh, first of all it was a little bit cheaper and uh, I'm not 100% sure at the moment. If I'm wrong, sorry, but I think the Omega kit does not even come with the rear tank. You use the original one in the Kit 690 or Kit 701 kit from kit690.com. You also have the, the rear tank from the 450 rally bikes. And then one main reason why I did not choose the Omega kit is um, I am in Europe and kit 701 or the kit 701 kit uh, came shipped from europe if i would have opted for the omega kit it would have come from outside of europe and i would have spent a lot lot more i think would be around about 20 24 25 percent in total of additional tax on the kit so uh, in the end it was a no brain i went for the kit 701 by kit 690 and uh, yeah I'm more than happy with this. The other one, the Raid Kit, for example. I like the Raid Kit a lot um, if you want to go for a lighter bike, but I wanted to have the, the front tanks, the big ones, and uh, yeah, the Raid Kit does not have them. So, question answered. Then we've got the next one from Husky Dave. Um, what are your plans and expectations out of the bike? Do you have plans for luggage mount? What is your tire choice for the bike and your planned routes? Okay, these are a lot more questions. Um, plans and expectations out of the bike. Um, I always say I'm super, super new to this topic. So there were no super big expectations. I already have the Triumph Scrambler. I wanted to do more off-road. I'm not so much into enduro riding and motocross. Um, rally was the thing I felt most comfortable with. Um, yeah, I did not regret this. Uh, I love to ride the rally bike. Now after the Canary Islands trip, I'm really, really sure I want to go on with this. And as I said on the last episode, 
the next plan is to uh, go racing. We had traveling and uh, now I will start, or I, would, I already started uh, to prepare for racing. So uh, this is the next main goal. Then uh, luggage mounts. Um, I did not cover this in the last episode. Maybe this is worth, yeah, this is worth a known episode. I went for Moscow Moto. I did not want uh, Rex on the bike. I wanted to have something reckless and I went for the Moscow Motor Reckless 40, not the big 80. Um, the 40 is more than enough for me here in Europe. Um, in the end I will not spend so much time uh, camping, so I always have an Airbnb or hotel or whatsoever. At least on the Canary Islands trip I had, so there was no need to take uh, 18 liters of luggage. I was super happy with the 40 liters I had and I was on a, in total, it was a four week riding trip with hotels and airbnbs 40 liters for me it was more more than enough um tire choice tire choice tire choice is a really really hard topic because uh, everybody has his own opinion um first of all i my first choice were the mets la Carus because i wanted to have something for on and off road and uh I was expecting more on-road than it was in the end, happily. But uh, I had the Carus on the on the Triumph. And on the Triumph, I really like them because I'm more on the road, as I said. Uh, just a little bit of off-road riding, and I only ride the Triumph in dry weather conditions. I never ride it in rain. So uh, I went for the Carus for the Husqvarna too. Then. Uh, Straight after three days, I <laughs> took them off again because uh, they're super, super slippery. For me, the Karoo is uh, not the tire to put on a rally bike. Um, so I was looking for, for alternatives and in the end I went with Golden Tire, uh, the GT... I'm not sure, is it the 723? If it's wrong, I will write it down here, we'll check later. But uh, I went with the Golden Tire, it was a recommendation by uh, Lyndon Poskett from Races to Places, I guess you all know him. And uh, I'm super, super, super happy with the Golden Tires. I have a little problem with them, with the, with the road legal stuff, because uh, I need papers for them to write them in Germany on the roads, and uh, I don't have them yet. Uh, I'm in contact with Golden Tire, and I hope I will get them. But uh, riding wise, they're awesome. They're held up super, super, super good, especially on the Canary Islands with the volcanic rocks, super, super sharp lava rocks. I'm impressed that uh, nothing broke, but uh, yeah, more than happy, more than happy. Um, I just the bike, planned routes. Planned routes, um, I have a planned route, but not for this bike at the moment. We have. Uh, a basic plan to go to Iceland in May, but uh, I'm not sure if I would go with uh, Husqvarna or maybe take the Triumph. Uh, I will let you know, or you will see in the vlog, anyways. So, next one Gravel Scout. Um, oh, I have to translate it's in German. Uh, which steering dampener is uh, mounted on the Husqvarna? It's, uh, it's a Scots mount, the Scots dampener. Um, I've had this in another episode, it's, uh, I will link it. Up here, 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 here. I will link it here. If you're interested, uh, there is a, a whole video about the steering dampener. Okay, next is from Jacob. Um, I know you usually don't talk about money with such a build, uh, but it would be interesting. What would be the price of a build like this? Well, um, you're right. Usually, I don't. I don't like to talk about money. It's uh, I have a part list on on the Dirty Bastard internet site, uh, so it's super easy to recalculate the build. Um, I'm not 100% sure. <laughs> I try to to avoid not thinking too much about how much money I spend on this bike, but uh, um, yeah, I think you can easily buy uh, another 701 from the money spent on the, on the parts but uh, yeah for me it was worth it. Um, next is uh, next is for the Germans um, as I mentioned with the, with the tires um, you Germany is a little bit weird with the road legal stuff and you have to go to the TUV and get everything you mount on the bike and the papers 
and they're very strict and if you don't have special papers for them to write it in your papers it's it's horrible forget about it um, it's not so easy um, and my bike is uh, not 100 percent street legal um, the important parts i've got them in the papers like the tank and everything but there are some minor parts which are let's call it a gray zone um, for me my opinion um, don't get me wrong on this, of course you have to be street legal and if you're not, your insurance will not cover anything if it's, uh, yeah, in the worst case, but um, you have, of course you have to decide for yourself. For me, my experience with the Triumph and with this bike too, um, if the build is done nicely and if, it, if it's executed fine and then the cops see that it's well built, and if you behave nicely and don't go like 120 kilometers per hour in the city or try to wheelie in the city and um, yeah usually they don't stop you it depends a lot of course on where you live at least in my area i always get away with some uh, and sometimes even with the thumbs up if i see the police that they really like the tribe and they like this bike and uh, i had no problems so far um for outside of germany i've been in riding in uh, portugal and spain canary islands and uh, with the triumph too the triumph is super super loud absolutely not legal and uh, i never had any problems i never really had problems yeah i hope uh, the luck will continue um, Next one is from Steve. Um, do you use a gimbal on the bike? Uh, I've seen some clips from the Canary Island on Instagram. Um, Steve, I will cover this in another episode. Um, no, I did not use a gimbal on the bike, at least not in 99% of the shots. It's all with the GoPro 7. The stabilization is super, super incredible and awesome. Um, a lot better than I expected. Um, about the camera stuff on the bike and everything, I will do a full episode of camera stuff on the bike. Uh, so, yeah, you will have to wait a little bit more if you want to have more details. Then, John, how did you mount the GoPro for those rear view shots? Same here, I will cover the, the camera stuff on the bike in another episode, sorry. Um, then we have a question from Jan from Germany. Um, I have to translate this, give me a second. Um, the ins ah, it's about the Instagram pictures and if they are available in a big size. Uh, Jan, of course, uh, I've already wrote you a message uh, that I will send it to you. I totally forgot, I'm sorry. I will send you the full size resolution of the pictures you asked me for. And uh, why did you choose this kit? Um, I think it's already answered huh? in the first question. Next one is from uh, Bento. Bento uh, said, oh, I thought the kit 690 and 701 were advertised as bolt on and no modifications to the frame, but you had to drill several holes and or re tap some. Yes, uh, this is correct. Um, I. I have not checked this. I'm not sure if it's really advertised as straight bolt on kits. Um, the modifications that have to be made on the frame are super, super minor. For me, not a big deal. And I did this for the first time ever. So, um, yes, I understand if, uh, if in the first, if you see this for the first time, you think, oh my God, I have to do modifications on the frame. In the end, it's, uh, as I said, it's not a big deal. Um, yeah, but you're right, it's not straight bolt on, minor modifications needed. Then we have another one from Christian. Uh, Christian says, I'm also thinking about getting a 7.1 and equip it with the rally kit. Did you ever consider the Aurora kit? Um, I think, uh, same here, huh? it's answered in the first one. I, I checked the Aurora kit. Uh, no, I never considered to get it, to be honest. Uh, not because I think bad about the Aurora kit, but uh, I went straight for, for the options, Kit 690 or Omega. So. 
Then we've got another one from Stefan. Um, I always thought the heated grips were in the rubber, also I think my BMW's handle feels like it's inside. How does the temperature sensor get fixed if you glue the heater? Um, the heated grips. I also have another episode about the heated grips here. I will link it one more time up here. Um, the heated grips I have mounted from coolride.de. They are a little bit, no, a little bit. They're totally different than the other ones I have found. Um, you're right, normally the, the heating stuff is in the, in the rubber or under the rubber. With the Coolrite, uh, the cartridges are mounted in the, in the, ah, oh, come on, inside of the handle, handlebar, handlebar. And um, it works awesome, really super awesome. It takes a little bit longer to, uh, to heat up, but I think this is maybe one or two minutes. And uh, yeah, I like it. And you don't have the problems that they were out there. You don't have the problem that you have to route the cables outside of the of the of the handlebar. The cables are already in the in the handlebar. You just have to get them out in the middle. And the temperature sensor is a totally different piece. It's uh, mounted inside of the frame, and it has a sensor cable going out, which I have mounted. Uh, under the light, uh, yeah, you can see it here. I will do a clip, a shot for you. Um, yeah, so it's separate. Question answered? I hope so. <laughs> um, what's the next one? Is there a difference between the handlebar mounted stabilizers and the piston stabilizers like the GS1200 use? Handlebar mounted stabilizers. Stabilizers? Are we talking about the steering dampener or are we talking about the, the BRP? Um, to be honest, I couldn't even answer the question. I have no idea how they do it on the, on the BMW GS. Sorry. Sorry, no, I can't answer this question. Um, next one is from Draka Lynch. I'm sorry, I will definitely. Uh, pronounce this well. Uh, can you explain me why you're not using the hose and using that small filter? Um, ah, you're talking about the, the crankcase breather. Um, I mounted this because it came with the kit. And the reason people do this, but uh, there's a big controversy about this, um, I don't think it will make a big difference. Um, the thing is, the crankcase breather um, breathes out some some oil dust and hot air and all dust. And if you mount it back in the filter, in the air filter, this uh, hot oil and hot oil dust will go back in the intake and will be burned. This is for yeah to get this thing legal with the with the emissions and all this stuff. Um, I think if you will test if it helps to, to get this out externally, um, I don't think that you will measure really a big difference. Um, I think you will not, well, I do not feel the difference here. So uh, don't get me wrong, nothing super big performance wise. It came with the kit, so I mounted it. Uh, maybe I will have to remount it to get the, the to pass the emission test in uh, one and a half years. We will see. Here. Um, that's it already. I hope I've answered all your questions. Um, and uh, if you have more, of course, I'll leave them down in the comments. Uh, I will happily answer them. But uh, that's it already for today. Um, I will try to keep this video a little bit short because it's super late. It's already uh, Saturday evening and I will have to get this video out in a few hours. So I will be off to edit this and get this on YouTube. Um, as I said, that's it, that's it so far for today. I'm out, have a nice one, and I will see you next week. What will we do next week? Um, I hope riding, uh, I'm not sure with the weather, but uh, I will find something nice for you. See you next week, I'm out. <laughs>